Hello and welcome to another video from the only channel that you need to not only survive the current apocalypse but actually enjoy it. And today's video is going to be uh, part three in our series about written in stones, about the calendar uh, and how that the entire earth at one time professed that the year was 360 days long and then every civilization around the planet all of a sudden out of the blue changed their calendars for three, from 360 days to 365 and what the Bible says about this change, well, why it happened and when it happened. Now, yesterday's video was a description of a satanic ritual that archaeologists, people who study history know actually took place where they would have a temple and this temple would have some kind of an architectural feature that caused a shadow to fall across different statues and images throughout the year. Each one of the images would represent one of the ten subordinate kings to Satan and it would also represent Satan himself as well as his bride. Scripturally, we know that Satan's bride ended up being Eve. But on an even bigger scale, the demons themselves all had brides. They were all human females, and this could represent that entire system that existed back then. So, we're going to, the reason I'm, this is so important, is I tell you that you can understand the Bible for yourself. You don't need somebody to tell you what's in the Bible, but you have to understand some key, very important things that have happened through history that are recorded in the Bible that are the key to understanding the rest of the Bible. And this is one of those things that the church has had from us. If you go to church and ask them, what is the Song of Solomon about? They will tell you some kind of esoteric foolishness about how that represents the relationship between God and the flesh and his elect. This, this is why I'm always emphasizing you have got to get out of church. If you're in a church constantly filling your mind with poison, you're never going to understand what's in this book. Okay? And that's, it's just a fact. You, I could tell you anything I want and you can go to school, go to your friends, and, and listen to them all day tell you that I'm a liar and eventually no matter how honest I am and how obvious what I say is, you'll know for a fact that I'm a liar. But I'm going to show you something that's so obvious that it can't be denied, but you really do have to stop poisoning your mind with religion. All right, this book, Song of Solomon, is almost dead center of the Bible because it's incredibly important, and yet no one understands it. In fact, I didn't know when I was uh, 19, 20 years old. I, I read when I read the Bible for the first time all the way through, and I got to the Song of Solomon. I just was. I was sick because I, I had put all my faith in this book, and here in the middle of the book is a love poem that doesn't mean anything. Little did I know, this is perhaps one of the most important books in the Bible, and it's in the center because it's a turning point in human history that you need to know about. Anyways, I'm just going to paraphrase. I can't, I can't see this book, so I just have to tell you what's in it. But uh, this starts off explaining that this girl who is in love with the king who in, in, in fact it calls him Solomon but this is not talking about Solomon this is talking about the, the ruler of the world Satan and it's talking about Eve and if you read it you'll understand that you won't you won't have to take my word for it but this woman says her brothers are all angry with her because she was supposed to care for the garden does that not remind you of Eve she was supposed to care for the garden but it says she left to make love to the king. And, and I mean, that's obviously what's happening. And it appears that this has been happening every year for who knows how long. So we get a description over here. And I think it's in verse 5. You'll have to... And look, when I tell you about this book, and I tell you you should read the whole book, the book is five pages long in my Bible. And if yours has big print, it might be more. But we got five pages and... Uh, and uh, anyways, the, first, uh, the, uh, the fifth verse of the, of the beginning of this, it says, I am a black girl. Now, that's the first, that should be the, your first hint that something's going on here strange. Because it says that when God rescued the slave labor force of, of Egypt, it was made up of a vast mixed company of people. So, Obviously, there would have been Asian people, black people, white people, brown people, but that's it. God's not one that concerns himself with race, so he doesn't mention anybody's color throughout the Bible, with the exception of Esau. But that story was, it was important because of the story that we know what color he was. 
But the, uh, the book of Solomon actually says that this woman was black and doesn't explain why it says that. Well, remember, in satanic worship, one day a year was their holiest day. It was to commemorate the time that Satan actually had sexual relations with Eve and created the first hybrid human demon Nephilim. And the commemoration occurred on the day of the new sun, when the day of the new sun and the day of the new moon occurred at the exact same time. New moons are always black. Full moons are white. That's all it's telling us. I'm a black girl. It is the full moon. It is the time for our copulation. Then next, and you just, I really, you got to read this for yourself. Like I said, it's only five pages. It won't hurt you. And this is, there is so much incredible the information in here ties the entire rest of the Bible together. Every single book of the Bible is somehow represented in this book. But it talks about this woman, and she's, she seems to be making a, a journey. And it says, now it is winter time. So it's mentioning that the changes of the season that she's encountering. And if you, I mean, and then, you know, you get so far away, it says, now I can hardly see you, my love. And it's like I'm looking over a mountain. This is all talking about the calendar and that ritual. And in fact, when she gets all the way, six months away, it says, I am on the other side of your round table. You know, this is, if she's on this long journey, why is she sitting at his table? Because it's not talking about a table that you eat at. The round table was the sundial. Everybody thinks that sundials are for telling time. The sundial was never about telling time. They don't, they don't work for telling time. The sundial was to tell you which God's month it was. That, if you look at any really, really ornate sundials, they'll have you know Mars, Jupiter, all the whatever different gods that they had that were represented by the calendar, and over here's the moon god, and there's the sun god, and that's what she's talking about when she says, I'm on the other side of your round table. So then, enough time goes past that she can start to see the king again. And you have to read this for yourself. But she says, oh, my love, there you are. And I can see your 60 strong men all bearing swords. So what does that mean? Well, first off, it confirms that the calendar had 30-day months. Because she sees 60 men. That means 60 months. She's two months away. She's 60 days. There's 60 days left between her and her lover that she meets every year. Every year she meets her lover. But something, this year, something happens. The next people to talk are people that are never mentioned prior to this. It says, but her brothers said, wait a minute. What are you doing? Our sister does not even have breasts yet. You're not going to do this thing. We're going to build a wall. There's a wall, and you will not get over that wall. You will not touch our sister. Our sister is going to be protected by us. We are her brother." When you see that, this is the same brothers that were mad at her before. This is humanity. It's talking about humanity. Humanity is about to suffer. If this woman, their sister, keep, continues to make this journey every year, humanity is going to suffer. But they're going to humiliate him by putting up a wall. The last verses in the book of the Song of Solomon are basically, My love, my love, where are you going? This can't be happening. I can see you. You're so beautiful. You're like a hind, the, the, the deer, and he's running away from me. Oh, no, this can't be happening. This, this is like, it's like a joke against Satan that was written, and it was written hundreds of years before the event took place. At that time, whoever wrote this had no idea what they were writing, and anybody that would have read it would have had no idea what they were writing, but... And, and it's just like today, you know, everybody's got a Bible. Ask them what's in it. They have no clue. Back then, the people didn't even have a Bible. They wouldn't have understood what this was. But four men who did have access to the Bible and who had discernment, who were able to figure this out, knew what that poem was about. And because they knew what that poem was about, Hundreds of years later, they were able to take a stand that was probably one of the most courageous things ever done by humans in the entire history of this war between Satan and Jehovah. 
the, the war between creation and civilization, the war between God's kingdom and Satan's empire, these four men were willing to give up their lives because of this poem. And we'll talk about that in the next video. If you don't want to survive, don't listen to me.